and hello and welcome to the Buzzing Business Knowledge Hub and welcome to 2019. And this year we are kicking off the Knowledge Hub with something I think is so important for every business, no matter how small you are, and that is PR because that kind of gets you to where you're going a lot faster and gives you that sense of things that you really need to know and the gravitas that your business needs. And we are incredibly lucky to have Sangeeta Waldron with us today, who is an award-winning PR guru. Um, she's built a very <laughs> successful business, hugely inspiring. Um, she has a background in um, uh, public sector in the corporate world. She's worked with celebrities. You might have heard of somebody called P.F. Sloan at some point. Um, she has worked with UK prime ministers writing speeches for them. So is somebody who really knows what she's doing and really, really pleased to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. Um, and Happy New Year, everyone. If it's yeah. not too late to say it. <laughs> Never too late, no. Um, so today, Sangeeta is going to take us through all the tips we need to know um, for how to build up your PR, your visibility, how to get the book written that you really need to be written, and really everything a small business needs to know about PR. We obviously have had some technical difficulties, so I do apologize for that, because this should have been live, so we're not going to see your questions as we're going along, but please do pop them in the box. Um, Sangeeta is a member of Buzzing Business. She is on the group. She will be able to answer them. So in the questions box, pop them in. I'm also going to be very rude and turn my face away <laughs> from time to time so that I can see any questions that are coming in live in the group. So one way or another we will get there so I think without further ado I'm going to hand you over to this amazing lady who just really has given me personally a lot of um, advice and help and has changed the way I see PR and I'm sure is going to do the same for you. <laughs> thank oh, you. Thank you Cheryl. I think I'd like to start with by saying that PR, which stands for public relations, is really about relationships and people. And within that, business is always personal and is about people. And we buy from the brands we like, the brands we love, and the brands we know about. And so PR is about raising the profile of your business, um, leveraging your brand. Uh, so people know it's out there and that's what PR does for you. Um, the digital world has really changed my industry and I'm sure it's changed lots of sectors. It's opened things up considerably. So before the digital world, before social media, before things like Facebook and Twitter, we would use uh, or read newspapers, magazines, radio, TV, now we have online and I meet so many businesses, small businesses still who are not online, who are not on Instagram, who are not on Twitter, or not on Facebook or LinkedIn. And they're really doing themselves a disservice because if people can't find you online, how will you grow your brand? How will you grow your business? And there are so many social media platforms, but I think there are some key ones that we should be on we should make time for and i would say that's instagram and i'll come to why in a minute twitter facebook so on facebook apart from your personal page you can have a facebook business page and that's the one i'm recommending for small businesses uh youtube you should be on youtube and linkedin those would be the key ones i would say that we should all make time for uh, and obviously you'll have your website where you'll be posting your blogs and you can, again, share your blogs or your posts from your website onto all your social media. And there are certain platforms allow you to do that quickly. So it's, uh, there's certain apps on there that seamlessly just posts from your website or from Twitter onto other platforms. So there are time-saving tools. 
But the reason why I'll start with Instagram and YouTube, because it's all about the visual. It's all about video. It's about photos. And there's so many surveys that have been recently done saying that video and uh, videos is going to be the way we receive information more. And the next generation, they're already searching uh, for video content online. And YouTube is the biggest search engine. It's bigger than uh, Google because that's how people are searching for their content. And the next generation, they want to see video because it's far more powerful. You can get, you can get a, a message across in three seconds. And that's why we're doing things like this because it's so powerful. It, it's, a, it's a great medium. And there's nothing like putting a, a face to a name, a voice to somebody, and it makes it more engaged. So if you're not on Instagram and you're not on YouTube, look into doing it. Twitter, I'm going through these things really quickly because I know we've just got a short amount of time. So Twitter is, is very much about real time. People who say, oh, Twitter's just about what you've had for breakfast. I mean, God, that, that was a statement that was made eight years ago. Uh, Twitter's now moved, moved so far ahead of that kind of uh, thought process. It's, the, um, it's actually a news, a news stream. Uh, Twitter's all about news. Some of the the biggest news stories now are broken first on Twitter than they are on the BBC, CNN, etc. You have presidents now tweeting their foreign policy on Twitter. Uh, the Indian Prime Minister won his election through social media. So if you're not on there, you're again you're missing out. So with Twitter, it's very much a everything in real time. You can see things that are trending. You can be part of conversations instantly. So you could be watching, I don't know, uh, Sunday night TV. You might be watching Dancing on Ice or The Country File. And there's something there that relates to your sector or to your, to your business. Tweet it tweet it and you can hashtag it and you can be part of the conversation and you can grow your profile just with those little those little actions because awareness drives drives consideration and that's all about pr and marketing uh youtube i've, I've mentioned if, you, if you're on instagram you can automatically be on youtube linkedin is great some of the biggest companies are on linkedin uh and they're looking for new thought leaders. They're looking for new voices, people to come into their companies to do talks at lunchtime. Um, companies that are looking for people for their boards are curating on LinkedIn to see what's happening. LinkedIn also does something called Top Voices. Uh, and so if you're, again, if you're posting video content, post it on LinkedIn and that makes you an active voice join groups on LinkedIn. And again, all these social media platforms have a certain etiquette. So when you go into a LinkedIn group or you join a LinkedIn group, don't just keep, don't sell, participate, engage. That's one of the key things about online uh, PR. And again, it comes back to relationships about people. So if you were invited to a dinner party, you wouldn't spend all night talking about yourself. You wouldn't be invited back again. You wouldn't have any friends. So it's the same thing with social media is to engage, create conversations. Um, and LinkedIn groups are a great way for doing that. And you can also set up your own company page on LinkedIn. It's free. All these things are free to do. And if you haven't done it, think about doing it. it it's really, you can post. Um, you don't always have to create content as well. You can share content from other news platforms from what you might be reading. Also get to know your trade press. So if you are a HR, if you're in the world of human resources, you've got some HR trade press, share that content on your LinkedIn, on your Twitter, uh, on your website. Uh, if you're in the, if, you, if you're a baker, you'll have, a gro you'll have the grocer, you'll have, um, there's now every newspaper and magazine are writing things on healthy living, what we're eating. That's also great content for you. So it's really to think outside the box, uh, create content yourself or curate your own content and share online. What else would I say? The other thing with social media is it's really important to own your brand. 
And I always recommend to people that I work with, if you haven't invested in some good profile pics, do invest. Because not only will you use them on your social media, but if you're thinking about gaining media coverage, you want to be in your local um, press or the national media, they always ask, do you have a high res image of yourself? So it's not the, the uh, pictures we take on our phones, they're high res images because that's what the media needs. So get invest in that, that's a really good investment to do. Marketing and PR doesn't have to have big budgets. If you can sort of build your foundations, so your foundations would be your, your profile pics. Everything else is free online. Um, the other thing I, I really think um, lots of businesses forget or they, um, they don't spend a lot of time thinking about is their audience. So really get to know who your audience is because you might be only wanting to appeal to a younger generation or it could be that you're trying to appeal to women in a certain age group. So get to know your, your audience, start to uh, curate what you're offering, your, your services, speak to that audience. Um, so, and I think that's really important. People forget that. The other thing is know who your competitors are, see what they're offering. Then you can also be competitive with your own pricing, your own services. Also, lots of people, they, they know who their competitors are, but then they try to imitate their competitors. Why would you want to do that? You want to be different. You want to stand out. Yeah. Um, so know your competitors, know your audience. And I, there's also something else which I think is really, really a strong aspect to have about your own brand. And that is know your core values. So core values don't have to be more than uh, four, five things at the most. Reason being, it's very simple. We can't remember more than five. So make them four, make them five, make them easy. And your core values could be things such as integrity, uh, fun, global. So my core values are fun, uh, PR with heart, global, and integrity. And your core values will help you make decisions in your business. So when you want to collaborate, uh, does that partner hold similar values to yourself? Does this feel right? Do they, you know, is it about integrity? Is that really important to you? Do they have integrity? Um, are they global? If, you're, if your brand is, has aspirations or working uh, globally. So I really think your core values are important. They're also important for your customers and your clients to know. Own them, don't hide them, show them. Put them on your website if you have a if you have an office have them out there so your team also understands what your values are and you're all working from the same place core values are really important they help us make better decisions and the other thing on on decisions i think what's also really key and what i call a wisdom is apart from businesses about people is to follow your instincts uh and this you know uh when you work in the media, that's what you do. If, if a story feels right, certain journalists will follow it. If it doesn't, they'll say not for us. And that's very much no, you know, if it feels right, do it, you know, don't let anyone else deter you, hold your conviction. And Richard Branson has said, and, and um, Sir Alan Sugar, they, they make a lot of their business decisions based on instinct. Uh, so really own your instincts. It's a powerful tool for business. It's a powerful tool for PR. The other thing I would say to small businesses, get to know your local media. Your local press are really supportive of local stories. Uh, so don't ignore them. Uh, get to know them. And by that, not just who's writing on, on your local newspaper, but what days are their press days? So we, so lots of uh, local newspapers are normally weekly. They come out once a week, normally on a Thursday and a Friday. So invariably their press day will be a Thursday or a Wednesday, more or less. So those are the days you don't really want to be calling them because they're trying to gather all their copy and file it for the newspaper. They're working to really tight deadlines. So get to know, get to know your local newspaper, get to know your local radio station. 
don't forget about your hospital radio station this is all reach this is all great stuff local businesses can be doing yeah. if you've got events that you're thinking of launching or holding or there's a campaign or initiative you want to launch and you want to do something special um think about uh contacting your local dignitaries your local mayor your local mp they love supporting uh small businesses and local initiatives and they make great photo opportunities which is again attractive to the local press and you can again share those images online on your instagram on your website twitter facebook etc so all these things feed into each other um if you are an established business and you're thinking of maybe you're re you want to make a bigger reach think about working with social media influencers so uh that's that's happening a lot on Instagram, which is why if that you should be on there, uh, set up your account as a business account. It's free to do and start to follow people in your industry or if, I don't know whether you're beauty or whatever it might be. Start to follow those those influences, start to follow other groups um, and and then if, if that's the way you're thinking and you've got a budget. Um, you know, an influencer with anything from 5,000 followers upwards should be, so then you're paying somebody for their, for their endorsements, should be quite manageable if you have the budget to do it. Uh, and I think just going back to, you know, being open on social media, social media doesn't work if you're being closed. And um, it's very much about being open to connect with everyone you get the most out of it and that's the same on linkedin on twitter so you might find when you look at twitter you've got it'll show you people who've decided to follow you and you might think oh it's a hairdresser you know and i'm a i'm a i'm a hr thought leadership person there's no relevance but you just don't know who the hairdresser business will know and i really think that's um it's so powerful when you're open when you connect openly with people and it's the same when you go offline and you're networking network be open to network with people and i really call this the power of serendipity which is the name of my business as well but i really believe in um when you're open you allow more serendipity and that means you just allow more opportunities for your business and that's what social media does it opens up opportunities for you um and i just remembered that we we want to talk about uh, books and if you want to be an author and one of the things i'm finding i work with lots of authors lots of publishing houses and everyone's got a book um or somebody or lots of people want to write books but what makes you attractive to a publishing house is your social media they want to know what's your collective what's your social media capital that's all your followers on twitter linkedin facebook instagram youtube all together is your tribe and that is your collective following because <clears throat> that means if you've got i don't know 8,000 followers, that's 8,000 people that will buy your book. That's approximately 8,000 people. And if you amplify that, who will help promote your book. <clears throat> so really work on your social media. Um, it is a little bit of a numbers game. Um, sadly, I, that's one of the downsides. I don't think, I don't, it's a bit like a beauty pageant, you know, you've got a 10, but uh, it's the way it works. And also when you're looking for media coverage, if you're talking to the FT, that's the Financial Times or the Guardian or the Times or any of these national newspapers mm. and magazines and women's magazines, they want to know what's your following because they're also looking for an audience. It's a numbers game for them. So if you can say, look, my reach is 10,000 or more, then you're very attractive uh, to them. And especially if you're writing a book. The other thing with writing books is um, it's, not, it's not just about writing a book and then it stops there. It's all the PR that goes on afterwards. Mm -hmm. And you would have aspirations for that book, which is that you would like to maybe do more speaking gigs 
on the basis of your book. So again, if you're on YouTube, you can start to curate your talks that you're doing, whether it's within your local networks, which are still very powerful, or you're doing any international events, start to curate that load it up onto your YouTube. Because if you want to do some of the bigger events, the bigger talks, they're gonna ask, what's your style? They wanna see that. So um, it's about, again, it's about thinking outside the box. I don't know if you've got any questions, Cheryl. <laughs> <There> <laughs> I are, can go on talking. Yeah, there, there are a few questions that have yeah. popped up and obviously I've always got questions of my own. Um, but one of the questions that popped up a little earlier, and sorry, I was looking at that, is, um, and I can't remember who asked, so apologies, yeah. um, but asked, we keep bundling PR and marketing together. So what is, what is the difference between PR and marketing, and why should we have both? <laughs> well, there is there's this whole debate that's gone on from time immemorial there's a difference between PR and there's a difference between marketing. But I believe there's a gray area. And particularly in the times we live now, yeah. it's with social media, it's so integrated with PR that, that there is no difference. There used to be, t be a time in marketing, pre-2008, before social media, where you would look at the newspaper and look at, uh, what kind of readers are there? A, 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 B, C. What kind of, you know, workers are they? And then you would target that according to your product. Now there isn't. It isn't like that. It's so much wider, um, and I, I don't think there's a difference anymore between PR and marketing because when you're when you're doing any PR, for example, for a book, it's all about the bottom line is book sales. So yeah. if you're getting a piece in, uh, say, the Guardian online. When somebody reads that at the end, what the publisher will be looking, what you as the author will be looking for is someone to click and buy. Yeah. So, um, and that's what online has done. You can click and buy. And that's why, you know, the, the high streets are suffering because people read click and buy or they get their newsletters where you can click and buy the products. So, um, so I really see no difference between PR and marketing. It should be integrated. And if anyone tells you otherwise, then your campaign's not going to be successful. It has to be integrated. Yeah. And you also mentioned um, a lot about getting the followers and it being a numbers game. And it sort of mentioned around that bit of a beauty pageant. So in, in that world where everyone's got their book, they've, you know, we've all got social media um, and there is so much going for free that we can shout about. How, how does having a good PR strategy, and I know the answer, but the question's asked, so I'm passing it on. How does a good PR strategy get you those numbers and to the top and that visibility and recognition? In one word, consistency. If you're consistent with your brand and you're consistent with your, what you're aiming to do. So uh, it's not a question of being just once on Twitter, once a month, you've got to be consistent. You've got to invest in time on your LinkedIn. You've got to invest in time in your Facebook. Um, so it's about being consistent. And when you're consistent, people recognize you're going to be there and they're going to expect that they get this, they're going to have tweets from you every day. They're going to see your Facebook page at least three times a week updated, uh, three times a week on LinkedIn. You will have to find out what works for you. But if you're consistent, that means you can be trusted. You're relevant. You're up to date with what's happening in your sector, in your market. And that automatically grows your following because people feel they can trust you. You're there. Yeah. Um, You'll see certain accounts on Twitter that um, they haven't tweeted in a long time. So some, you'll think, well, what's the point? Let me unfollow them. There might be somebody else who's out there who's more relevant, who's doing stuff. Um, and you'll follow them. So it's about posting, as you know, I would say daily on Twitter, uh, daily on Instagram, Facebook and um, YouTube and LinkedIn you can do maybe three times a week but it's about being consistent yeah 
Now, another question that sort of popped in, this is amazing stuff. Thank you for yeah. sharing this with us. Um, but another question that sort of popped in was sort of around cost and given the free stuff that there is, because there's loads of stuff we can do for free, but why would a, a micro one person business or a you know very small business struggling for funds, what sort of percentage of their turnover should they be putting towards um, PR and marketing, if anything, or, you know, sort of basically why should they be paying for this when there's so much free stuff out? Well, you're, um, do you mean paying for a PR, somebody like a PR expert or do, yeah. because um, for paying for, well, yes, I'm sharing all this for free and that there, there are books you can buy uh, to do it. But I've been over 20 years in my industry, so I know I have a value. And it might not be the smaller businesses that can afford my time. Um, and that's where you'll use the free kind of stuff. But some of the, the businesses that are um, maybe medium to large, who um, have objectives that they want to reach, and certain goals and certain uh so they might have a uh, a product they want to launch to market or a product they want to launch to international markets that's where you'd employ somebody like myself or you might be ceo of a company and you want someone to look at your to look at your messaging within your speeches uh the copy within all your website materials your promotional materials or you have something that's very specific uh, but it's a strong story and you know that you want to place that uh, within the national media or some of the international media. And that's because of my, you know, 20 years in the industry, I'll have those contacts. So you're, again, you're paying for a, a PR experts contacts, mm. um, their little black book. Yeah, and, and I think even not just for the medium or bigger businesses as well, even for a micro or smaller business, those contacts are huge because you were talking about getting press releases and when to, to contact the paper with your story and that kind of thing. A lot of journalists won't answer the phone, won't pick up if they don't know you. But if, the, if you as a PR expert have built that relationship, you shortcutting that and know how to get that story into the paper. Yeah, so I think you're, you're really right there, Sha. I mean, one of the things is I, I do pitches. I pitch every day, do you know, I can do it in my sleep. I know how to pitch a story. So somebody will say to me, this is their business, you know, this is their, you know, it, it's again about understanding the story, what's the driver, what's the brand story, and then knowing how to attract the media with that. So that's what you'd be paying for. But it's not impossible for a small business to do. It's just, again, knowing what your story is, who your audience is, what your core values are, um, what's the passion behind your business, and packaging that. And it's really easy to uh, call, your, call your local reporter uh, if you've got a local story, or call if you think it's a, it's a bigger story that affects more than your local community but it, and it's a, it's going to affect the country or a a place somewhere else in the world then pick up the phone or and you know and contact the press what's the worst they're going to say no exactly. and it's, it's it's also i think as well pr is incredibly pr and marketing in as both but um is incredibly important for building those relationships because if you've got an understanding with those contacts and those connections, they are more likely to trust you with referrals and business as well. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And the other thing is I have a reputation. So I mm. have a, a really good reputation. So when I ring a journalist, they know that the story is strong. It's been researched. I'll have all the facts and that they can count on me that the story is not fake. You know, there's, we have a phenomenon these days uh, with fake news um, <laughs> and stories that are not substantial. And so that's, again, because of all, all my time in this industry, people know when I, when I call, it's a strong story. Yeah. And that's the other thing. We have to avoid, um, 
you know, if we, <clears throat> if we have a story, make sure we do all our facts, all our research around our own story, your facts hold up. You've asked, if, you, if you're using a case story in your, in your story to the press, make sure, and it's not you who's the case story, and it's somebody else, it's a story about somebody else, or it could be a client or a client's endorsement, get their sign off. Say, mm. look, we want to use, uh, we think you've got a great story, we'd love to use it with the local press, are you happy? Don't just assume that people would be happy. You've got to really respect people's privacy and ask. And I, again, this is, I've known so many small businesses sort of think, wow, we've got this client feedback or we've got this great story and they just contact the press and it goes horribly wrong. And then it's not positive PR, it's crisis management because you've got the relationship with the client and then the, the media have run the story that the client didn't want to go out. So join up all your dots. Yeah. And, and I think that's also where paying somebody for that support is totally invaluable because sort of, you know, with the amount of free stuff that's out there, a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing. And somebody with, you know, who has that experience and that will be able to manage that crisis and know exactly who to call in to mitigate any risks that have come out as a result of that as well. Yeah, I guess also like anyone in any industry who's been there for a long time, you kind of, you know, all the pitfalls, you know what to look out for. You, you have a, a much bigger sort of overview of, of everything. And so I, I know automatically and sometimes, you know, clients will come to me and say they've got this story or they, they've, they want to launch something. And again, it's about trusting your instincts and, you know, and I know sometimes it's not, it's not for me or yeah. it's not right it still needs some work doing to it um and you know and that and that i'll say you know it's not for me or you're not quite ready yet you need to still build in these factors and that's what a, a publicist a good publicist will do that's fantastic wow thank you so much that's i mean the stuff that you've given us is incredible you know sort of just moving from knowing your clients knowing your values knowing your brand identity building up that relationship <laughs> getting, getting out there is this fantastic you've li literally given us all your all your top secrets um but j just before we sort of finish off is there one sort of pearl of wisdom something that you sort of think if i don't say this you know, people yeah. will be all the poorer for, you know, what is that piece of wisdom that you would leave us with? <laughs> Don't wait. If you have something that you want to launch, do it. There's no right time. Get onto social media. It's there. Use it. And just really follow your instincts. Fantastic. Sangeeta, thank you so much for your time. And once again, my apologies to everyone for the technical difficulties we had with Outgoing Live. But I think having all this value recorded that you can press pause, make notes and come back to is absolutely phenomenal. Um, we will be back in a few weeks with our next Knowledge Hub um, and we'll be talking about presentation skills then. So keep up in the group, read all about it. If you have any questions for Sangeeta, please pop them in the comments box underneath. She'll be dipping in, in and out and be able to answer anything PR. As you can see, she's phenomenal. She knows her stuff. Um, and I think that's it for today. So thank you very much. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, everyone. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.